Hello friends and welcome back to another Flutterflow tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be seeing how we can implement phone authentication in Flutterflow and Superbase. I know that currently Flutterflow does not fully integrate phone number authentication with Superbase, but don't worry, I'm here to show you how we can do it easily with just a few lines of custom code. Alright, let's get into it right now. So all you need to have is just a simple base Flutterflow project, which I have over here, as well as a base super base project already set up. Moving back into Flutterflow, let's just create our authentication pages first. So we'll add some pages. We can go under authentication and let's choose some that look nice. Right, this one looks simple enough. Login one page. So let's just choose that using my theme. And we'll just name it login page and now for the register page let's just go and find another page once again under authentication let's just choose this create account one page and we'll name it register page all right now that we have both of our pages now we have to link super base to our Flutterflow project. So firstly, we have to go under app settings and we have to enable authentication over here. The authentication type will be super base. The initial entry page, we want it to be the login page. And once the user logs in, we want to bring them to the home page over here. Now scrolling down over here, under integrations, we have to go to super base and we have to enable super base. And now we go to our super base project and we'll go to project settings. And we'll go to API and we'll copy this project URL, paste it in our API URL over here, and we'll copy this project API key to paste it in this add on key over here, and we'll get schema. Next, in our home page, we also want to add a logout button so that we can retest our app multiple times later in test mode. So, in our column, we'll just insert a widget and we'll search for a button and we'll just insert that button over there. We'll add an action to the button and for this, it will be super base and it will be super base authentication, the logout action over here. We can just change the text of the button to log out. Cool. Going back to our login page, we want to change this email address text field to phone number so we'll change the name and we'll also scroll down over here and we'll change the label text as well to phone number we'll do the same thing for our register page and now we have the ui all set up and done Let's also add the action to navigate to our different pages to this rich text over here. So we'll add an action to navigate to, and this will navigate to our login page. Going to our login page, we also add the action to navigate over here to our register page. All right, so now let's actually work on the actual phone number authentication functionality in our app. So the first thing that you have to do is that you have to go to your super base project and you have to go under authentication and under providers, you see that there's this phone provider, phone auth provider that is currently disabled. So first we have to enable our phone provider and for the SMS provider, we can just choose Twilio verify for now as it does not require us to input all of these. We also want to disable phone confirmations to make our lives easier. And then we'll just click on save and you should see, and you should see that the phone auth provider is now enabled. So that's all we have to do to configure our Superbase project. Now we can go back to our Flutterflow project and now we have to add some custom code over here. So in this custom code section, we actually have to add three custom actions, but don't worry, I've already put a link down in the description below to my GitHub repository where you can just copy and paste those actions. So if you click on the link, you should be brought to this page over here where you will see three different files. So let's go, first go into our check auth.dart file and we'll just copy all of this. 
then we'll go and add a new custom action and we'll paste it over here and for the action name make sure that it is checked off exactly like this because it has to be the same as the function name over here so then we can just save our action and basically what this check off action does is that it is our own way of checking whether the user has successfully signed in or not. If the user has successfully signed in, it will return a boolean of true. If not, it will return a boolean of false. All right, so next, let's go back to our GitHub repository and we'll go to this sign in with phone.dot file. Once again, just copy it and paste everything. And for the action name, we'll change it to sign in with phone. Then we'll save the action over here. And basically what this action does is that it allows us to sign in to Superbase using just a phone and a password instead of email. And if the sign in is unsuccessful, then it will return an error message over here so that we can show the users why they were unable to sign in. Lastly, We'll go back to our GitHub repository over here and we'll copy and paste the sign up with phone.dart file. The action name will be sign up with phone. Then we'll save the action once more. And what this action does is that it allows the user to register with their phone number as well as their password. And there's an extra check over here. There's an extra if condition to check whether the confirm password text field is the same as the password text field. And it also returns an error message if the user is unsuccessful in signing up with their phone number and password. All right, so that's it. That's all the three actions that we need. So now we can go back to our widget tree and let's add the functionality in our app. So firstly, in our login page, we'll go to our sign in button over here and we'll open our action flow editor. We'll first remove this action and we want to add our own custom action. So we want to add our sign in with phone custom action. For this phone parameter, we'll give it the phone number text field and for the password, it'll be under widget state and it'll be the password text field. For the action output variable name, remember it gives an error if there is any, so we'll just name this as error. So after signing in with the phone, we'll then want to check whether the user has successfully signed in with our check auth custom action. And remember, this custom action, this check auth custom action returns a boolean of either true or false if the user is successful in signing in. So we'll just name this as is successful. Next, we want to add a conditional action. And for this condition, it will be the action output and is successful boolean. So if the user has successfully signed in, we then want to allow the user to navigate to our home page. If the user is unsuccessful, however, we then want to show an error message. So we can search for informational alert dialog over here. For the title, we can give it as unsuccessful. And for the error message itself, we can then make use of our action output and this error message that was returned from our sign in with phone custom action over here. So that's it. That's all we have to do for our phone sign in part of the app. So we can just copy this action chain and we can bring it over to our register page create account button. So we'll delete this action and we'll paste the action chain that we just created. So now instead of our sign in with phone custom action, we want to choose the new custom action and we want to choose our sign up with phone custom action. For this phone argument over here, there will be the phone number text field. For this password, it will be under widget state and the password text field. 
And finally, for the confirm password, it will be widget state and password confirm text field. Once more, we will name the action output variable error since it returns an error if any. So the check auth custom action will be exactly the same. As for the condition, we have to change this since we copy and pasted it from a different page. But it will be under action outputs once more and we'll just click on is successful. And if the user is successful, we'll just navigate them to the home page like before. And if not, we'll also want to show the error message. So it'll once more be under action outputs and we'll just click on error over here. Yep, and that's it for our register page as well. And that's it, we're actually completely done. And now we can try testing out our app and seeing if it actually works. All right, so test my is just loaded. If we try going to sign up and create a new account and give it any phone number, and we give it a password, and we try to create an account, you can see that we have successfully created an account. If we go back to our super base, under authentication and users, we can see that we have created a new account using the phone provider over here. If we log out, and now if we try signing into our new account, you can see that we have successfully done that too. Now let's see what happens if we use a wrong phone number. You can see that an error message pops up over here saying that there are invalid login credentials. And just to make sure we can see what happens if we use an invalid phone number over here, you can see that the error message also pops up saying that there's an invalid phone number format. If we try using a wrong password, passwords which don't match, we can see that an error message also pops up telling us that the passwords do not match. Congratulations, now you have successfully implemented phone authentication in Flutterflow and Superbase. If you'd like to bring it a step further and implement SMS one-time pin logins into your app, check out this video over here, you don't want to miss it. Alright, thank you and see you in the next video.